Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Optional and today we're going to be looking at Bumblebee. So continuing on with the ActivityCon 2021 challenge write-ups. Uh, this was a great challenge made by John Hammond, a sequel of sorts from Workerbee, which was uh, a challenge in NahamCon uh, earlier in the year. Uh, there is a, a link between them, obviously both be related, but actually once we complete the room we will uh, actually say what it is. And... Is the challenge up yet? It is. So, share a flower, extract some nectar, uh, show me a flower, and track down the pollen and nectar. So, it looks like we've got some file upload functionality here, and we've also got it, whatever we upload coming up here. So, the first thing we want to do is if we do echo uh, re and what's it looking for? It wants to extract it. So, share a flower. So, if we create a flower, um, with any luck, where did I put this? I think it's walkthroughs, bumblebees, and flower. So if I upload that, um, we're going to get an error message. So sorry, this isn't the flower I'm looking for uh, or that we know how to extract from. So maybe extraction, that that is a, a, a hint that we need a zip file. So maybe if we do zip uh, flower.zip and then include flower, maybe this time if we upload a flower, it's going to work as well. Um, this doesn't look like a flower we know how to extract from. Okay, so I'm going to open up Burp Suite and we're going to see if we can maybe manipulate this, maybe find a way or a verbose error somewhere that's going to that's going to give us a thing. So the first thing we want to do, and speaking as this is a write-up stroke walkthrough, we are able to potentially error this page. Uh, when Burp Suite ever wants to load. Or not. There we go. Burp sweet. Hello. Or not. There we go. Come on. It's on a go slow today. Right. Anyhow. So essentially what we want to do, or what I'm going to try and do, we're going to start looking. We know flower.zip doesn't work. We know we're trying to create something that's going to zip for, or pull from. Uh, so if we grab uploading flower.zip again, and this time if we send this to repeater just so we can see what we can do, we can send this and... If we scroll down a bit, we can see this isn't a flower. Um, so it's asking for a name, it's saying flower. So what we can do actually is just scream at it a bit. Clearly I didn't scream enough because it's not errored. But eventually what will happen is that. We'll get a, a, a 500 response and it will tell us it's an internal server error. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that again but we actually want to see the 500 error in uh, a, a more structured approach, essentially. So if we send that off, we get a Django error. So it's a little bit different to, you, you've probably seen work zerg and flask type. Uh, this is essentially Django's verbose error and what you get when debug is on. Um, so there's a few bits of nice information that we actually get. Obviously we get all the request information that we sent, Django, da 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 da. But what do we actually care about here? So there's a few things. We know the location of the application. So uh, vim notes.txt uh, app location is there. Uh, obviously I put view.py on there, but um, so what do we see in here? So if we start, we can actually click into these errors and it, it shows a bit more information. Similar to how if you've got an unlocked work zerg um, dashboard, you're able to click into the errors as they appear. Workzug is a little bit of a different example because you can gain interactive console. I think that's possible with Django, but it's not on this version. But what we're actually looking for is this. So uh, if not string requ uh, request dot files flower ends with dot flower. So actually, this has been useful because it tells us that uh, we need our f um Come on. we want to do flower dot flower. And is that going to error this time? Gives us 200. Show me the flower success. We've extracted the nectar from the flower. Perfect. So by causing a verbose error, it, it reveals just enough of that code that we can actually find how to, to, to essentially use the functionality of the app. So if we change flower.zip to flower.flower, 
we can actually see that flower gets uploaded. We've extracted flower, we can click into flower and let's go let us download. So that we now have upload functionality and because of the upload functionality we've got arbitrary right. And there's that link between worker bee from their hamcon and bumblebee from ActivityCon is one is generic read, which is what worker B was, and this is generic write. So we now have to think, okay, we can write files. How how do we abuse this? And there's a bunch of upload vulnerabilities that you can do, and I think on security upload vulnerabilities. So on security, similar to how in the previous video, the Go blog video, we, we referenced a non-security article by um, Gus Ralph again. <laughs> So there's actually a few things you can do. You can do a bunch of checks. So they've basically re listed what their methodology or their approach to testing upload functionality. So the first thing we see is zip slip. And now this was one of the things that came to mind. It does give us a Python 2, a bit of Python 2 code. So vimgen.py. Um, and if I change my pi and local to 2, I should be able to do Python gen.py it creates RCE. Nice. So let's make some modifications to this and see what we can do. So we know our write has to be flower dot flower. That's fine. And we're going to essentially, or what the error showed us is that we we're actually being put into slash temp slash nectar, I believe the directory was. Um, I don't think I stopped too long for that, but we're going to add a few dots. So essentially for each uh, dot dot slash, we're going back one stage in the directory so a good way to show this is currently we're at bumblebee uh, and walkthroughs if I do cd dot dot or ls dot dot it's then going to show us the directory before so that that's kind of how zip slip works essentially you are saying go back this many places in the directory and then create the rce.php file now this is where it becomes a little bit interesting because this isn't a this isn't a PHP system that we're exploiting. So what we know is it's in debug mode. And what debug mode does with Django and Flask alike is it will allow you to make changes to the underlying structure of the application and it will redeploy the application, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is Django uh, structure. So in Flask, it's quite common you would set it out. So you've got an init file or an init.py file, which is then going to give you the initial process function. You're going to have a routes file maybe, or if you're using blueprints, you'll have blueprints. You'll then have templates and static. They, they will be your directory structure. And so what we want to do, I believe this top one gives us an idea. Nope, nope, nope. I lied. This is not the article I was looking for. There is a really good one. Essentially, uh, file structure. Come on. There, there it is. So this is the image I looked at when I did this yesterday. So I will give a shout out to Wes because Wes was in the same team that we were in. He managed to, he first blooded Bumblebee. So I will leave a link to his blog post down below, but I wanted to just showcase this vulnerability as well because I think it's a really neat challenge and it, it kind of gives you an idea as to how you may approach these type of things. So Django structure, we were, if you were creating a Hello World application, you, it's got the init.py. We, we kind of assumed there would be an init.py um, and we can mess with that. We've also got views, we've got URLs and yada, yada, yada. The interesting one is init.py because that's what's being ran and updated. So if we change this to init.py and get rid of that, then we can write Python. So let's try import OS, uh, os.system, and then in here, we, we can essentially run our commands. So I'm going to back out of this and enter tmux just so I've got a little bit of ease here. And what we're going to do is if I set up a netcat service, uh, how did I do this under the actual thing? So I think I set up a netcat service here on 1234. I then tunneled it with ngrok and I used TCP 1234 so we could actually get an IP address for this. Um, so the interesting thing with this is you will need dynamic or you will need an IP address because what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this through doing cat or um, we're going to do, I believe, slash dev TCP. Uh, then we're going to do 13591518. Uh, 
and then we're going to do slash and we'll do 13340 because we're trying to hit that ngrok service right so that's going to hit that and then what we're going to do is if we pass it etsy password we should in theory get etsy password right so if i do rmrf flower dot flower and then i do python gen dot pi we've got our rc dot zip why did that not change why did that create that then oh wait it did create a new one i'm being a, a little bit of an idiot there uh so flower.flower it's going to upload like so uh, however, that's not going to work because I haven't actually taken into account the location of Bumblebee. So what we will essentially do is we will go back into gen.py. We will now go back to the init and essentially uh, put that one in there and do a forward slash. So that's now going to go back to the root of the directory, do that, and with any luck, create our update to init.py. Okay. So we hit that, we should, we see the connection. So we know we have, um, we know we have that thing. Obviously, uh, if we actually wanted to extract files from this, what we would do is instead of doing uh, dev TCP, we would do, uh, hang on. Pretty sure it's cat output um, into dev TCP. I think that's the correct way of doing it. However, we will see. I want to see if this works. Did I regenerate that? I did. Da, 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 da. No. Okay. Anyhow, I digress. I digress. So let's go over to revshells.com and actually uh, gain a reverse shell for this. So if we do 1, 2, 3, 4, so we're going to continue to use the Angrock tunnel that we have. Um, I believe my IP address for chen.py is correct. 13... It is not. So let's quickly change that one over. And while we're at it, we'll also change that to 13340. I tried using a, a series of these different reverse shells and only this one worked for me. So I there is probably a way of doing it. I just ended up using this one because make FIFO seems to work the, the best for me. Um, so let's quickly generate our new one. Go back to Bumblebee, go in, go into Flower and upload. And hopefully, if I've done that correct, it should give me a shell. Okay, nice. So, this is where we get to. So, we see uh, Bimbash not found. So, how do we go about fixing that error? So, all we have to do is in here, we're calling Bimbash. So, let's change that to BinSH. And we will regenerate our flower, re-upload our flower, and hit it again. And this time, when it rebuilds and deploys itself, we should get a stable shell. I say should. There we go. So we can do who am I? Uh, we are root. So there we go. We can go into root and grab our flag. And there's our flag. So overall, really fun little box. I'd say this is probably easier than worker be. However... Still a fantastic box nonetheless. I look forward to see what further challenges, if there's going to be any little twists or turns that John's going to do and continue on the B-series or whether this is going to be the end of it. Again, shout out to Wes for actually first blood in this during the CTF. Big kudos to him for that one. Uh, be sure to check out his write-up below. I will leave that in the description and also I'll leave it as a comment, I believe. Uh, yeah, if you do like the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and join the Discord. That's in the description. I will hopefully catch you on the next video, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace out. <laughs>